Hey everyone. So today's video is going to be a basic introduction to epistemology. So we'll start with the question, what is epistemology? Epistemology is the study of knowledge and justified belief. So most of the video is going to sort of center around those two concepts and hopefully making those two concepts a little bit more clear. So before moving to that, let's back up a little bit and note that there are different kinds of knowledge. So when we say we know, that could mean various different things. There's knowledge how. So knowing how to often do something, perform some tasks, speak some language. Um, you might say, I know how to ride a bike or I know how to speak French. Then there's knowing who, knowing a person. So I know Kanye West personally, or I know Sarah's dad. And then finally, there's knowing that. So I know that Moscow is the capital of Russia. So if you know that, you know the truth of some statement or some fact. Some statement that is true or false is the subject of what you know. And when epistemologists talk about knowledge, epistemology being the study of knowledge, they are interested in all three of these. And there's been papers written, lots of papers written on all three of these. However, this third one, knowing that something is true, is given the most attention. And so we'll be mostly focusing on that third category of knowledge that. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about the different types of epistemology. So the first main branch of epistemology is what you might call traditional epistemology. So traditional epistemology um, concerns what we'll be talking about in this video. We're gonna start, but not finish <laughs> defining knowledge in this video. So concerns the question, what is knowledge and how do we define it? And then also the question of skepticism. That's the question of how much we can know. And you might notice in this picture, there's a brain and a vat. So some people have proposed that we can't even know that we have hands or we can't even know that you know, maybe that there's a table in front of you um, because you could be a brain in a vat or you could be plugged into the matrix. So in future videos, we'll talk a lot more about that question, some arguments that people give for skepticism and then responses as well. Um, the second category in epistemology is what's often called social epistemology. And social epistemology concerns the question, how do other people affect what we can know or what we should believe. So here you might, one of the most natural topics or concepts here is what's called testimony. Testimony is when someone tells you something, when, when should you believe them and when should you not? Can testimony be a source of knowledge? Um, but there's a lot of other topics that get talked about in social epistemology as well, including the relationship between uh, morality in epistemology and things about how social media affects what we can know, things about disagreement and what experts say. Um, so lots of things that are very relevant to think issues that, um, that we've been going through today. Um, the third category of epistemology is what's known as religious epistemology. So religious epistemology involves questions like this. Could we ever know that God exists? Could believing in God be rational? And if so, how could it be rational or when could it be rational? And then the final category is what's known as formal epistemology. Formal epistemology sort of treats beliefs kind of like probabilities and then ask questions about that. Primarily, what makes having a certain level of confidence or what an epistemologist might call a credence rational? So for example, if you have, um, a 0.9 confidence it will rain tomorrow, there's a 90% chance of rain, what would make that rational? Okay, so those are different subfields within epistemology. Now let's start looking at our main question in this video, the question of what is knowledge? So first, to, to answer this question, I want to think about the relationship between knowing and believing and talk about three lessons that we can draw about the relationship between belief and knowledge. Okay, the first lesson is that knowledge always involves belief. 
So if you know something, then you believe it. If Tim knows that it's raining, then Tim believes that it's raining. There are some epistemologists who try to give arguments against this, but this is a pretty commonly held view um, that knowing entails believing. And even if it doesn't always entail believing, knowing almost always involves believing. But for our purposes, we'll just say that knowing always involves believing. Okay. However, knowing and believing are not the same thing. And this is because you can believe things that are false. However, you can only know facts. You can only know true statements. Knowledge attaches you to the truth in a certain way. Belief doesn't. Beliefs could be true, they could be false, but when you know something, you know you're guaranteed to be connected to a truth. So here's some examples to kind of explain this. Susan believes that the earth is flat. Her belief is false, but that makes sense. She might be a flat earther, right? Uh, we can understand, yeah, Susan has a false belief that the earth is flat. Billy knows that the earth is flat. Well, that doesn't make sense. Uh, it, it just, it, it's the wrong, it, there's some kind of mistake involved in that. Um, and that's because knowledge, again, connects you to truths. So you can't know something that is false. So you can see on our diagram here, um, knowledge involves belief and knowledge involves the truth. You can believe things that are false. There can be truths that you don't know about or you don't believe. Um, but knowledge involves the intersection between belief and truth. So that's sort of what this diagram shows. When you know something, you have a true belief about that thing. So if you know it's going to rain tomorrow, then you believe it's going to rain tomorrow, and it's true that it's going to rain tomorrow. You can't know that it's going to rain tomorrow if it doesn't rain tomorrow. You also can't know that it's going to rain tomorrow if you don't have any beliefs about whether it will rain tomorrow. So knowledge involves true belief. So is knowledge true belief? Are knowledge and true belief just the same thing? No, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so let's, let's consider an example to see why. Suppose that Bob's planning a picnic for tomorrow and he wants to figure out if it's gonna be sunny tomorrow for his picnic. But instead of checking the forecast, Bob's like, no, I don't wanna do that. Instead, I'm gonna get my magic eight ball. Uh, magic eight ball is basically this thing and you shake it and then it will randomly spit out yes or no or definitely or definitely not or you know it'll give you an answer at random. So Bob grabs his magic eight ball and he shakes it and he asks his magic eight ball will it be sunny tomorrow. The magic eight ball says yes and then Bob's like nice it'll be sunny tomorrow. So Bob believes it'll be sunny tomorrow because his magic eight ball told him so. But let's just suppose by luck that the magic eight ball happens to be right. The magic eight ball is totally unreliable, um, but it's lucky and it is actually sunny tomorrow. So when Bob believes because of his magic eight ball that it'll be sunny tomorrow, he has a true belief, but he doesn't know it will be sunny tomorrow, even though he believes that it'll be sunny tomorrow and it's true that it'll be sunny tomorrow. So the lesson from this is that in general, we can make a lucky guess and get a true belief, but this is not gonna give us knowledge. Okay, so now we've learned that knowledge is not the same as true belief. And this is because knowledge involves a third ingredient. This ingredient is known as justification. So when Bob believes something, just because he shakes his magic eight ball and it tells him that thing, Bob lacks justification. That belief that Bob has, even if it's true, it's not justified. It's not a belief that Bob should be holding. Um, so when you believe something, for example, on the basis of really good evidence, let's say instead of magic eight ball, Bob checked the forecast and there was you know, basically a 0% chance of rain tomorrow and Bob believes it'll be sunny tomorrow, then Bob has justification, right? But again, if Bob just makes a lucky guess or shakes his magic eight ball, he lacks justification. Okay, 
So you might wonder, what is justification? What's the best way to understand justification? That's very controversial and hotly debated. I think one good start to an answer is that it has to do with our evidence. Um, but here's a, a really general way we can think about justification. Justification means you have a good basis for something. So if you have a justified belief, you have a good basis for that belief. And if you have an unjustified belief, then you don't have a good basis for that belief. Okay, so you know we've talked about knowledge, we've talked about justified belief, we've talked about the relationship between those two things. And you might just say, who cares? Why should I care about knowledge? Why should I care about justified belief? Why does any of this matter? I think it matters for a few reasons. Um, I think knowledge is a very important concept. No is actually one of the very few words, I think it's um, less than 100 words, that's common to every single language. So all languages have something that means no or knows. It's also one of the top 10 most common verbs in English. So it's something we say all the time. We're always talking about what we know or what he knows or what they know all these very, very common thing that we, word that we use in English all the time. Justified belief is also a very important concept because it helps us with this huge fundamental life question, which is what should I believe? And a natural answer to this is you should believe the things that are justified. You should believe the things that you have a good basis for believing. And this can explain why Bob's Magic 8 Ball belief isn't justified, but if Bob had checked the forecast instead, then he could have had a justified belief. But this applies to deeper, more fundamental questions as well. Should I believe that God exists? Should I believe that abortion is wrong? And having a grasp on what it means to be justified is essential for determining what we should believe, both about things like the weather, but also these deeper, more fundamental questions like God's existence and morality and that kind of thing. Sorry. Um, so two more things to note about knowledge and justified belief. I think coming to know things or coming to have more justified beliefs is basically how we learn, how we discover new things about the world. So it can help us understanding what knowledge and justification are can help us discover things about the world around us. And furthermore, knowledge and justified belief also help us make decisions. They help us decide how to act. So, you know, if I know or if I have a justified belief that coffee helps me focus, then I drink it in the morning, especially when I have a lot of things to do that need focus. Um, so if you know that that or if you have a justified belief that your assignment is due soon, then you start working on it. So not only is learning and answering questions about God and morality and all this stuff important itself, but it's also important because it leads us to action. So these are some of the reasons I think studying knowledge and studying justified belief are very important. Okay, so summing up what we've talked about today, epistemology is the study of knowledge and justified belief. There's at least four types of epistemology, traditional epistemology, social epistemology, religious epistemology, and formal epistemology. Knowledge always involves belief. Beliefs can be false, but knowledge only latches onto truths. However, knowledge and true belief are not the same because knowledge involves justification, having a good basis for what you believe, whereas you could get a true belief that's just a lucky guess. And knowledge and justified belief are important, both for learning about the world around us and for helping us make decisions.